morning. Just about eight o'clock. I got up maybe half hour, 40 minutes ago, got packed up. Had to cross this stream immediately. So my feet are starting out wet today. <laughs> got down to 32 degrees last night. I slept very, very well. And today's about 15 miles. Let's get it. About a mile in, I just got up. I wanted to get up earlier today just to kind of get a bigger head start, but slept in a little bit. About a mile in, in, I haven't eaten breakfast or anything yet. Wanted to get at least a mile in before I put anything in me. Just to kind of get things rolling, you know. This morning for breakfast is a Bobo's peanut butter chocolate chip. These are pretty good. They, they got, have a bunch of different flavors. I don't like to do big elaborate breakfasts. I like to kind of get something in me quick and, and get rolling. But the secret weapon because I'm not really a coffee guy. Hate it if you want to. Yeah, get a little bit of something in my stomach, pound one of these guys in about 20 minutes, maybe get a jet fuel boost or something. <laughs> a couple quick things. As of yesterday, it was a little bit easier than I thought it was gonna be. My hip flexors were starting to get a little tight. My uh, left heel got a little bit of a hot spot. My right Achilles got a little tight. But I think I just kind of started a little bit too fast. I'm starting a little slower this morning. So I should be okay. Cheers. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Made it up out of the valley. I'm kind of on top here. Got a little bit of cell signal, but not really enough to do much. I wanted to get a weather report, but eh. Here's a question for you. Do you prefer to backpack solo or backpack in a group, meaning with one or more other people? For me, I like to camp with other people. When you're in camp, it's good to have that camaraderie, that companionship. But when I'm actually hiking, the act of hiking, I like to do it alone. There's a big spider on my camera. Dude, go away. Ah. Only because you hike at your own pace, there's no pressure to feel that you need to keep up or slow down for another hiker. If you want to stop, you stop. You don't have to worry about trying to inconvenience you know your hiking partner and if you need to stop and you're like oh i feel bad because you know i know he doesn't need to stop whatever when you're on your own you make the miles on your own terms that's what i like and then you meet each other at camp because you know where you're going or at least you should know where you're going <laughs> and you have a good old time that's me what about you what's your stance on all that let me know down in the comments I can't believe how much water there is. We probably crossed 50, 60 of these type of water crossings. So this trail, I mean, with all the rain it's been having, that's where all this is coming from, which is nice because you know you don't have to worry about having to refill on water. But it can be a little bit of an inconvenience because you know with every crossing there's a risk of slippage. I almost fell a couple times. But this is everywhere. Time to strip a layer. Let me drop a little knowledge on you regarding hiking and backpacking. There's a lot of people who see my Instagrams, they see my YouTube videos and they're, man, hiking's awesome. I'd love to come do it with you sometime. And everyone loves the, the, the romantic idea of hiking and backpacking. What do I mean by that? Well, they see all the, the views 
and they all the rivers and streams and waterfalls and mountaintops and vistas and it's all amazing but in reality all those views come with a price because <laughs> when you get down to it backpacking uh it's kind of a son of a bitch sometimes. <laughs> and I think that's probably the same for for through hiking too. A lot of people love the, the romantic idea of through hiking, but the reality is it's it's a grind. I mean, it's an everyday grind, but you take the highs with the lows. And that's backpacking. starting to get a hot spot on my right heel. I mean, just starting to feel it. So that's the time, you know, you think you can push through and push through, maybe adjust your foot with each step, you know, maybe it'll go away. That's not quite how it works. <laughs> so you start feeling that hot spot, especially if you still have 90 miles to go. <sighs> Take care of that, seriously. A full blown blister will ruin a whole trip. Did bring some Luco tape. I had a, a small hot spot just like that on my left heel yesterday. And I put some tape on it and it feels great now. But yeah, blisters are no joke. So pack some Luco tape and, and take care of it, seriously. I only notice it that I, not on downhills or, or flats, but going uphill, any kind of incline, it's a, uh, it starts to get a little a little hot. So I got some Luco tape on a little like a little rewards card deal here, but just do it. Get it done. I'm making a really good time. I'm I'm hauling ass. And then and then you gotta stop. Alright, hopefully this uh makes it a little bit better. <laughs> the road that goes to the Hog Creek campground and they're supposed to have like bathroom facilities and stuff up there it's probably closed obviously it's all flooded out just another another water crossing flowing pretty good the current's going pretty good I'm just gonna shuffle my feet here look at this this is crazy. <laughs> oh, yes. Just had to make another little pit stop. Blisters were starting to get hot again. I put some Luco tape on there. So I just doubled up the Luco tape, but let's see, uh, let's see how this goes. The trail spits you out onto this road, so there's a little bit of a road walk. Not sure how far it is to Fort Douglas, but I think right after Fort Douglas, there's going to be very little water, so I might have to fill up in this next river here. Love me some road walking. lunch just uh, went over the bridge there's a small dirt road walk right after the bridge 12 25 i haven't seen jeremy yet um i can't imagine he's too far behind me he you know he's a fast hiker and i've been videoing and stopping and you know taking care of blisters and everything but nice spot there's a stream right here i can filter there's a nice breeze so i'm just gonna gonna eat lunch 
I redressed my blister spots. I pulled off the old Luco tape. That stuff, you know, once it's dry, it sticks like crazy. But I do have a couple small blisters. I reapplied the Luco tape with like a double layer. But the blisters are there. They're just going to annoy me now. So my plans are, hopefully, is that they don't get any worse. And I just keep on pushing through. I would hate to bail out of a hike this early because of blisters. I don't normally get them. So, so right after lunch, I just kind of put my head down and started pushing, just covering miles. And uh, I noticed that I haven't seen a, a blaze in quite a while. And now that I'm hiking, I mean, I'm on a trail. The trail? I don't know, but I've been looking for a blaze for a while. I have no cell signal, so I can't pinpoint where I am. I'm just hoping that I'm on the right trail, and I hope a blaze shows up pretty soon. Because backtracking would not be fun. Damn it. Oh my goodness. I was getting worried. Mile marker 106. Okay, I am on the right trail. I was starting to get a little worried. Feet are hurting a little bit, and I don't know if I could backtrack if I wanted to. But 106, we're making some progress. I think another mile, we hit a high water bypass because the normal trail is through Hurricane Falls. And with all the water, it's probably, probably going to be flooded. So there's a high water bypass that we're going to hit. Uh, and so instead of camping at Hurricane Falls, we're going to camp just after the bypass. So, oh gosh, I'm not lost. <laughs> getting pretty low in water there's not supposed to be any water up here but i found this so i'm just going to take advantage of it it still looks a little silty like yesterday the water's just a little silty from all the runoff and rain not muddy just silt does that, does that make sense so i by no means I've been crushing miles today. I mean, I'm not hiking super fast, maybe two miles an hour. I'm just surprised, though, that uh, Jeremy hasn't caught up to me. You know, I've taken a lot of breaks for blister care and, you know, lunch and everything. And, and uh, yeah, he just hasn't caught me. Very strange. Well... Made it to the high water bypass. I'm glad this is here. HWB you know, hooks off to the right and it's uh, three, three and a half miles to that other campsite. Still no sign of Jeremy. I'm uh, getting a little worried. Is he okay? Is he feeling okay? Did he get up feeling like crap? Uh, and if that's the case, can he bail out? Um, will he be able to get a, a ride to where I am or get noticed? to me that he's done i that's the dangers of separating while hiking now jeremy's a very strong hiker one of the strongest hikers i've ever hiked with but if you're sick you're sick but i'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say he's just moseying and he's probably itching to catch up with me because he says he likes it when i go in front of him because it's like hunting he he's like eagerly awaiting him catching me <laughs> uh but three, three and a half miles, and uh, I get to sit down without this stupid pack on. So this bypass, it's, it's pretty gnarly. It's not used as much as the main trail. So there's, there's minimal maintenance on it, and it's, not, it's just not as worn as the normal trail. A lot of overgrowth, uh, a lot of down trees. And the elevation, the downhill coming down here, it's it shoots down. My uh, my ankles are just killing me. But I think we're really close to the first campsite. I hope it's a good one because I'd like to stop there. But yeah, high water bypass. It's not necessarily hard, but it's I think it's a lot more challenging than the normal trail. Found a little campsite here. 
sat down to eat a little snack and look who I found. What up? He was just a couple minutes behind me, but yeah, his uh, his feet are a little, a little dog tired as well. But we're thinking this isn't the actual first campsite. We think it's probably, we probably got another quarter mile, give or take, but we got to find where we go. Made it to camp. It's uh, like a sandy beach, but the river is right there, so water won't be a problem. It was a, it was a hard day. Camp set up, food, sleep. So a little bit of a confession regarding my blisters. This year I bought a new pair of Ultras. All of last year I used the Lone Peak 4s and they were great. They were just, uh, they didn't have as much cushion as, as I wanted. So I ended up researching a lot and I ended up going with the Temp 2. It's got a higher cushion so it's a lot more cushy feel. But it does lack some of the things the Lone Peaks have such as the rock plate. Now, the rock plate, you know, eliminates, you know, feeling the trail too much. Uh, it'll help deaden down, you know, going over rocks and roots, which helps foot fatigue. Um, so I took these out. I wore them around the house the first couple of days I got them. Then when I got a chance to go outside, I put some miles on them and they felt great. No hot spots, no blisters, nothing like that. And they were fine. I even took a really good hike uh, under, under weight, my, my whole pack. The night before I left, and I should know better than this, I picked up these Superfeet Trailblazers, insoles, and they're highly recommended by, you know, trekkers and through hikers and things like that. And I wanted them for the Temp 2s because they have a carbon bottom to it. So this would basically act like a rock guard, a rock plate when it slid into my shoe. So the night before I left, I decided to slide them in and, and, and go with that. So that was the mistake. Uh, I should have did the, the trail, the training runs with these in it. I didn't. I ended up with the blisters. But me being the dumbest smart guy that I know, I brought the original insoles with the shoes too because I just had a feeling. These felt a lot better. It wasn't putting direct friction on my on my blisters, but it was too far gone. The damage is done. The blisters are there. So now I'm not getting direct friction on the blisters, but they're still there and the pressure of just the heel cup is getting to them. So the rest of the trail, uh, I'm gonna keep these out. I'm gonna use the this, this stock insoles and then uh, just hope that the blisters don't get worse. So I should know better, lesson learned, if you're going to go for a 100-mile hike, make sure you're training in what you are actually going to walk in because your feet is what carries you through the damn trail. So that's my fault. It's been a pretty good trip. Some of the follies so far. Obviously, I got blisters. I broke my tripod for my, for my camera. <laughs> so that was fun. And then lastly, and this is definitely a too much information thing, but my ass smelled so bad. <laughs> I had to sit in the river and wash, do some laundry. I mean, when you can't stand your own smell, that's, that's saying something. Like, like I said, not that you wanted to know any of this. Just about 8 o'clock. No fire tonight. I'm going to hit the hay early. Um, it is calling for some rain in the morning, like an 80% chance of rain. It's uh, like 6 a.m. I plan on getting up at about 5.30, leaving at 6. So we'll see if tomorrow is packing up under, under the tarp here. But I'm tired. I think I'm going to sleep pretty well tonight. Ah. See you in the morning. Oh, no.